Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Keep the criminal French out of Norway UK trade may struggle to stand still after an EU exit German Euro founder calls for catastrophic currency to be broken up Trade packed right for US and EU Plus, more in your letters German political urge to unify and standardise I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, on our homepage, the French people are not accustomed to being unwelcome in other European countries, but if one right-wing Norwegian MP had his way, they would risk being stopped at the country's borders along with Roma and Bulgarian undesirables. A Norwegian MP from the Anti-Immigration Progress Party has called on Norway to shut its borders to organised groups of Roma, Bulgarian and French people, who he accuses of being notorious criminals. Norway might just be able to pull this one off as they have resisted EU membership. However, much of their trading is dependent on the acquis communautaire, the massive book of EU rules. As British Prime Minister Dead Cameron struggles to accommodate Eurosceptics in his own party, trade experts warn that quitting the European Union would force Britain not just to rework trade relations with the EU, but also with the EU's trade partners and probably the World Trade Organization. Moreover, it would struggle to maintain the same level of trading rights it now enjoys, they say, including those that benefit London's financial centre, a major contributor to the national economy and a significant exporter. A point to note here, if Britain remains inside the EU, then the kleptocrats will force the profitable financial marketplace out of London through regulation and fiscal integration. So the bottom line is, the Great Britain PLC will have to renegotiate globally for trade anyway, so best we be getting on with it. Oscar Lafontaine, the German finance minister who launched the euro, has called for a breakup of the single currency to let southern Europe recover, warning that the current course is leading to disaster. The economic situation is worsening from month to month and unemployment has reached a level that puts democratic structures even more in doubt, he said. I also hear many ministers strongly opposing such measures. And, of course, Jack also got a great trade of magic beans for his mother's cow. Democrats and Republicans alike want to see strong economic growth and good jobs for Americans, even if at times we may disagree about how best to achieve these objectives. So it's gratifying when both parties agree on something that could boost jobs and spur economic growth in America, like the recent movement towards clinching a comprehensive trade agreement with the European Union, one of our most important allies and commercial partners. Hmm. Well, we should all be asking ourselves a question. Why did such an EU-US trade agreement not get tabled during the boom years? Why now, when both the EU and US are in the opening rounds of an economic collapse? A letter from Peter Simmons reads, Dear Rick, the article you featured on the Fourth Reich was interesting but omitted a crucial historical aspect of German history, national unification. I'm not speaking here of the reunification of East and West Germany, but of the unification of all the German principalities in 1871 to form an integrated nation state. Bismarck is famous for bringing about the final phase of this process, but it had been going on in one form or another for over 150 years. Within the German political psyche, unification is a good thing. For them, it created the most prosperous and powerful nation in Europe. You can read Peter's full letter via the links below. Today in our video library... As you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced, and so through the month of May, I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. 
Now, speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest entry by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike, but I'd prefer like, please, and most importantly, sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So, without further ado, today's video, which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist, is Confessions of Johnny Barcode by S. Brent Haywood Films. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below.